Hi. So what we got going here with the Atom is it runs on Atom BBS Pro by Sean Merrick. This software has a nice write-up in the All Things ColecoVision newsletter for February of 2024. This month, if you're watching this when it gets published. It's a nice software package written for the Atom by Sean Merrick back in 1986 and he still works on it now. He has made a number of changes and he continues to make changes on it as we speak. There's a, another version 4.23 that's coming out. And sometimes I give him suggestions as to things I'd like to see in it. I had this running for about four months last year, then I took it down because I had to use the Atom for other things. But now that I have a backup Atom and other stuff, I can put it back up and let it run some more again. So what we got here, like I said, you got an Atom in here. It has a 64K memory expansion in it. Um, well, actually, it has a 512K memory expansion, but it only uses 64K. That's fine. I know. I should ask Sean if it uses more than that. Over here, this is an ADE. If you don't know what an ADE is, that's an Atom Disk Emulator. This is actually a prototype one from three or four years ago, made by John Lundy and sent to me, that I used when I was making um, the software that I used to access the ADE. This right here is a Wi-Fi modem. It's plugged into a serial port, and in this box here is an Orphanware serial card that plugs into the expansion port. This is about a 35-year-old car, and I put it in a box just to make it better. So that's what we have here. We have the system right here, and I will go and run it through the emulator to show you how it actually looks inside. But this system just sits here. I turn off the screen at night. I know it's not going to get monitor burning, but I turn it off anyways. And so now let's see what it looks like. Okay, so I have moved away from the Atom computer. I'm over on the Linux system now, and I'm going to run the BBS in the emulator. I'm using Atom M, which is a nice emulator running under DOSBox. I'm a Linux system, so I got an emulator running under an emulator. But the reason why I'm doing it here is I get a better screen capture. If I ran it over there on the Atom, I'd have to then do a capture of the... Um, of the composite out and do a bunch of conversions and it, this is better looking. So anywho, I'm now in the Atom system here. I'm at the A prompt for CPM and I just want to show you these are the files that come with the system here except for the one copy.com that is a program I put on there for copying things. So to get started you would just type in the num type in bbs.com. So let's just start the BBS up and I can show you what it does inside. I'm going to type BBS, loads up, and it tells you that um, it's made by Sean and how to get a hold of him and everything like that. Press any key. It says that it's configured for the Y modem 232 and Orphanware serial port. I don't have neither one of those on the emulator, but you can still run a local without any attachment or any modem attached to it, so we can still do it. So I'm just going to log in here, or I'm going to set it up. First type in the name of the BBS, and this one is always the Coleco Atom BBS. The name of the SysOp is me, Millie, and SysOp means system operator. Some people call it SysOp. I always said SysOp, and that's what I stick with. Here's the security. I just hit enter on that one. Now it wants to know where to, what drive letters to assign things to. What I do is, because I'm using the ADE, so I have drive A is my storage drive, and I make drive M the RAM disk, my run drive. It copies things over from the storage drive to the RAM drive. It makes it run a little faster. So the storage drive is A, and the run drive is M. You could do AA. Now, if I was going to do some uploading and downloading, I would put in what drives are here, but I don't do any uploading and downloading, so I'm just, I put in zero. Now it wants to know what disk it is so it can load things, so I'm just going to hit return. It's going to process the various system files. Now, since we don't have a real-time clock, you always have to set the date. So every day you have to come in and have to change the date. So today is 010824. And it's always AM here in BBS land because it doesn't uh, keep track of time. Now it's going to load the messages from disk. Once it's loaded, this is the waiting for caller screen. Now you'll see it says total calls zero, today zero. The system, says, the system doesn't track how many people called overall. It has how many people have called since the board went, first was started, like right now when I started it. And then how many people called today or to the, the date since then. 
So, you see on the screen right here, it just says waiting caller, tells me what date it is, um, total calls, number today. I can hit space or press the game button to manually answer it. I believe that is for when he originally wrote the software to use the Atom Link modem, which didn't have um, didn't have ring detect. So if you wanted to run this as a like a temporary system, you would have to tell it to answer the phone. Um, then drives how they're set up. Uh, as I said, A for storage, M for run, and then the file library is none of them. If I wanted to change, I could use store get to do that. Message buffer, how much space I got left in there? I have um, right there, as you can see. And if I hit return, it shuts the system down. But I'm going to or return the login, escape the shut system down. So I'm going to log in, hit return. And what that is, I just logged in as if I called in. Now it's a lot faster when you're running locally than if you were calling over the system. If you're a new user, you type in new here, or you could type in the user ID to log in. Let's, let's go with the new user right now, or type buy to get rid of, to leave. So, and, and the interesting thing about buy, now Sean doesn't use buy in here, but buy is a, actually was a program that was written for CPM back in the RCPM days, the remote CPM days, where when you called into a C, remote CPM, you would drop right at the, at the CPM prompt, at the A prompt or whatever drive they had set up for you. And this is back when you could trust people. Not now, like if you did that, somebody good on the first thing you're gonna do is format your hard drive. But you could get on there and you could then run a message program on there to leave messages. You could download software, upload software, view whatever's on there. And when you were all done, you would type the word buy. And buy would run a program. When I was doing the CPM back then, I ran a program called Buy 510. It was version 5.10. And what Buy 510 did, and what all the buys did, is when you typed in buy, it would reset the system, attach the serial port to the keyboard so that anything that came through the serial port was as being typed and anything that was going out to the display was also going out the serial port. And then it would also watch and listen for the phone to ring. And when it would ring, it would answer the phone. And there's other things built into it too. It had a built-in clock and a whole bunch of other things. You had user control levels. Buy was really a powerful program. But it was fascinating that you started the program by typing buy. And that would then set up the system for the next caller to call in. Now, if you just disconnected and you did not call, you did not type buy, buy would reset itself after a couple of minutes of inactivity and then be ready for the next caller. So that was buy 510. And buy 510 or buy in general was very fascinating. It was I loved working with it. I used to use it on um, when I had Capros and Osborns and Chromimcos and all the other fascinating software. So I'm going to do a new right now. Now, one thing that Sean has done here that I never did point out to him, but when you put the word buy or new or anything else in brackets like that, you, that in, in standard BBS parlance or terminology or whatever, whatever's in brackets is the same as hitting enter. So by putting the word buy or new in brackets, it kind of defeats the purpose. So this shouldn't both be in brackets, but that's just nitpicky. So here's a little info for new users. This can be changed. Um, I think it's info.bbs. It can be changed to set up where you can see you got a 30 column screen, 50 lines long for messages and so forth. So a full name here. I'm just going to, since this, I'm running this local, I'm not going to be actually messing with the real bulletin board system. I'm just going to type in any full name here. Let's just, just, just type in, um, I'm going to type in my real name, William Hicks. Checking our file. PO, uh, street address. P.O. Box one two three, uh, Boardman, Ohio, four 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 five. Oh. I forgot that the the Atom emulator doesn't support the key the numeric keypad on the keyboard. That sucks. Zip code phone number one two three dash one two three dash one two three four. My password is gonna be password. Passwords are case insensitive, so it doesn't matter what you type in there. I don't know what the limitation is. I never really tinkered with it. See, can I just type a one character password? Is it four? When I used to write BBS software, I had a minimum of four characters with the password. But now, yeah, you know how now it's like minimum 16 characters with a special character, some uppercase character, and a drop of blood. Ready to issue new user number. Save account or cancel? I'm going to save that account. Why? 
My user number is 42. I got to remember that because from now on, if I want to log into this copy that I got running here, I need to use 42 as my user number and password. It's kind of interesting that 42 is the uh, answer to the universe, or answer to uh, life, the universe, and everything. What's the, uh, what's the, well, that's the answer to the question, 42. So here we go. Press any key. System date. Your list, last visit date was blank because I've never been here before. No calls received as of today. Press any key. If any calls have been received, it would show me who called. Press any key. And this was the main menu. And on the main menu. And now you'll see down at the bottom here, just so you know, those um, keys on here, which I probably can make. Let me see if I can make them go away. Uh, is it control Y? Nope. Uh, yeah, I don't have an undo on here, so I don't know. I was, I was trying to make the, I'm pointing at the screen, says if you can see it. I was trying to make the smart, smart key things go away down at the bottom. I don't recall exactly what key press it is on here to get rid of them. But, I'm going to here, I'll just do this. And I hit S, Control S to pause. So here's the main menu here. As you can see, it tells you Control C, abort, Control O, skip message, Control S to pause, any key resumes. Now, as you saw, we never get to see that. But if you were connecting to this thing at 300 baud, which means it runs very, very slow on the screen, you want to be able to abort menus that you don't want to ever see. I mean, because you already know the command, so just abort and continue on or skip it or pause it if you want to look at it like you're trying to read something. So here, anywho, what's going here? BBS developer email. That is how to contact Sean. See? Then we have the next one is browse message headers. This will show you all the messages in here. There's 63 messages on the board right here. So let's just, I guess I just, oh, oh, that's the starting number. Okay. Let's try it again, but I'm going to, I'll let it scroll on my, so this is, this is where you would want to have the, okay. So browse message headers and I'm going to, I'm going to start at 60. So you can just see what there. This is where you can go find messages. Oh, I got some feedback. I got to read it. Oh, look at that. Sean sent me a message earlier today. Why modem 232 firmware? I have to look at that on the real board and see what it is. Okay. So that's how you can browse message headers. Um, chat mode requests. I can hit chat. And you hear that noise? Yeah, that's why I keep the volume down on my screen if people try to call me. But it, what it's doing right now, if it's running on the main system, it, it's paging me, and then I can jump in, and we can chat. We can type back and forth. So, yeah, I just entered it. Now, how do I get out of chat, though? Escape. Oh, okay. All right, so I just learned something new there. And then we have feedback message to SysOp, information about the BBS. Feedback message is basically send in email or feedback. Information about the BBS. That shows... Um, one of the files on the, when the I think it's info BBS. Um, last list of message boards. I only have one right now enabled. Uh, I should enable the others eventually, but I haven't done that yet. See, the whole idea behind me running the board last year was I just wanted to see if we could actually run the board if it worked. And now that I actually have a backup atom that I can run, it will support things. I can, I can run without having to use it for other things because I. I as you know, I do a lot of coding, and when I do my coding, I have to test things, and most of my testing is on games now, and I have a number of ColecoVisions I can run them on, so I don't need the Atom anymore to test games, it is. So, anywho, so I should, I should add some new boards. So, that's the message boards, mail search. Um, oh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm searching for it, but... Uh, Uh, okay, um, okay, let's go help. Oh, I'm not, I'm still here. <laughs> news bulletin, other BBS sites. I mean, these are just showing text files. That's a news bulletin text file that I have to someday update. Other BBSs, um, there's not many more. But again, it's something I can update. Now, I can use these for other things. I can start changing the text files and stuff and doing things with them. There's a lot you can do on bulletin boards. They're... There was bulletin boards that I used to use. There was one called 4X or 4M. I think it was 4M on the Atari. And the nice thing about it was that you could, um, in your menu system, you could attach menus to uh, menu keys, letters, A through Z. You could attach them to various things. You could attach it to a text file or another menu or a, a function to do. And 
what I used to do with them is if you ever played those um, adventure games where you choose your own adventure where you'd read some stuff and then you'd have to do go here to go page five and so forth you choose which to go next I did the same thing I made these um, decision trees and menus and they were fun to play because not only did you play games but you could also have information buried in these decision trees it was really interesting I mean if you, you read a screen and it would say press A for this or B for that and you do B and now you've seen something else and so anyways, maybe I can get Sean to implement that somehow. So I can post or read messages or mail. I can select a message board, user account changes, who recently called, X file, transfer libraries, flow changes, non-stop setting. If I do flow, that means it will keep running. If I turn it off, if I turn flow off, then it will pause and tell me to press a key. Uh, let's just post a message here. I'm going to post a message. I'm going to send it to all. I, doesn't, I don't believe... I have not, you know, I, someday i got to really get into this. I don't think you can send private or email to anybody other than the sysop. I'll have to dig in that because it's a free for, it's freehand how you type in the names. So I don't believe it has the ability of looking up who you're sending to. Well, let's just try that. So I'm going to send this one to John Smith. Subject, hey there. So now I'm typing the thing in here. Now this is where like we're all we're all um, spoiled with our full screen editors and everything like that. You would want to keep in mind that when bulletin boards first came out, some people were just using teletype systems or line printers. They weren't even using screens, so there was no such thing as <coughs> full screen editors or anything like that. When I got into writing BBS code in the late '80s, and I was writing it on the PC under DOS, I used to write full screen editors because at that point you had the ability to do full screen so you could send control characters, you can move things around. But anyways, this is not a full screen editor. What you have instead is you can write up to 50 lines of 30 columns each. So I'm just going to start typing some stuff here. See how it beeps and won't let me type anymore. So I'm going to go back here and fix this. And then when you're done, just hit enter again, and it asks what you want to do. So I can abort, continue, save, undo last line. And <laughs> now this right here, I type continue, I'm just going to start typing on line four. If I just if I realize I had a mistake on line one, well, obviously you can see what is going to happen here. I undo last line, it's going to take me to three. I got to I got to basically delete everything to get to line one. So I'm just going to save it, save, and it was saved. And now let's just go here. I'm going to do read. If I type in N, it's going to show me the new ones. Oh, every message is new for me. All right. <laughs> all right, well, let's just work our way through all the things. I forgot that all the messages are going to be new to me. So, And I really don't have, I don't think there's, I don't see any way of, yeah, can I, how do I quit? Control C doesn't, Control Q doesn't, Control Z doesn't, Q doesn't, um, yeah, there's no way of breaking. That, that's not a, that's, that, 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 that's not a feature, that's a bug, but oh well. Um, yeah, you get stuck in here. Hey, people are just going to disappear because they're going to be like, ah. Especially, what if I had like a thousand messages on here? This is where you'd want to have flow. And unfortunately, I don't see any way of getting out of here. I could be wrong. There could be a way of breaking out. But yeah, I'm, up, I'm getting there. Up to message 60, 61. Now, um, what... Why is it showing me? Oh, that's that's not a private message. Okay, right. I thought it was a private message. Yeah, I, I I realized I saw that. Yeah, I saw that there's an update on the Y modem. I say that, Sean, and I don't like doing updates a lot of times because when I do updates, it breaks other stuff, and then I gotta dig through my paperwork trying to figure out what I did wrong. But anyway, there's the message that I wrote. Hello world, this is the Clico out of BBS. BBS thing is cool. So there you go. That is. Now, if you're aware of it, BBSing had a lot more to do than just messages. I mean, 
you had doors where doors were kind of cool because you actually went through a door into another program where you could play games and there was hundreds if not thousands of games you could play what single player games multiplayer games games that continue forever there's multi-user bulletin board services i actually have a multi-user bulletin board service on one of my xps that i may someday put back online it allows up to 256 people to be on at one time you can chat you can talk you can do all kinds of stuff you can play games against each other i may put that back online i'm not sure but i digress so here we go this is what we have here so far this is the bbs and i'm just going to type buy now i'm going to leave exiting it at that point you're gone and then it's waiting for the next caller so there you go that is the atom bbs pro it's a nice software package for the atom n it's professional and it has a lot of the power that for the time all software packages had now yes there was other things that had more things our bbs which was a basic coded bbs system for cpm was very very powerful but it also was very very slow um it could be sped up if you compiled it it ran under buy um there was there was citadel which was an awesome package that was re was renamed to or not renamed but ported over to pc called asgard it was a rooms based bbs where you move down around various rooms um citadel was really a nice software package to run uh yeah there was a lot of packages back then there was um turbo bbs which was written in pascal and many many more but this is atom bbs running on the atom under cpm and i'm just going to go through the whole process i'm going to shut it down now hit escape i got to tell it what i make sure the disk is in there and then i have to update all the files and it's all done and as you can see there's everything there and there's other programs in there edit user which i have not even used once so let's just see what edit user does let's get rid of i can't or can i is it control y yeah okay it just doesn't use control i don't work there edit the user files uh choose user file drive is a search for user id well what's find me what's find the one i just made Oh, I got to search for the one. 42. Ah, oh, there I is. Alter this record. Yes. Oh. Okay, yeah, the name's okay. I was going to say, I got to type it on. Let's see something. So now, remember, we're running CPM, which only shows you 32 of the 80 columns. So if I hold the control and hit the arrow keys, now you can see it clicks over there so I can see the password and everything else that's in there too. You gotta remember that. Interesting. I'll have to use this program more often. <laughs> so anyways, that's that. Um, I do believe he has a config program too that lets you configure how the BBS looks, but I don't have that here. I'll have to fit, I have to get, I think that's part of the new version. But that's Adam BBS um, for the Coleco Adam, and I hope you enjoyed the little in-depth review slash show you how it works slash listen to me talk. And happy February, Adam. Uh, we missed out on it last year. I think I missed out on two years. Damn, if I did, I was sorry about that. I think it was only one year. But happy February, Adam. What February, Adam means is that everything in February is a Coleco Adam. Let's celebrate the Adam. Have a great day.